when I'm developing application code and it's all right there in the application, I, I make a tweak and I deploy it and it just works. Like I didn't have to do anything else. When I then start to consume Amazon services and then have Amazon services talk to each other, admit events and consume events, it's, it's like as a new person, I don't even know, do I do that programmatically? Is it quote unquote wrong to like actually just log into the console and manually set up a <laughs> bunch of stuff and like provision tokens uh -huh. and then put them into my application? Like that feels so dirty because it doesn't feel reproducible. Right. So like, but it works, right? It works. It gets the things yeah. done in your app. And I think that's, again, one of the real challenges that AWS has um, because Ben, I totally feel your pain. I mean, again, the sort of the, my, the big project we're working on right now, or one of the big projects we're working working on right now, again, the sort of workflows and the architecture diagrams for these things are huge yeah. with like 50 or 60 icons <laughs> you know, on, on the screen for this one service, right? And people talk about this and, and experts who work in particularly the serverless area in AWS will say, look, yeah, it looks daunting. It looks complicated. But, you know, this all this complexity was being hidden by your local app, your runtime, whether it was .NET or Cold Fusion or whatever it was, that was all hiding that from you, right? You just have to deal with it in this very kind of like, decentralized, fragmented kind of way. But the advantage in the long run is that you have things that are super resilient. And if you want to swap something out or add a new piece of code or functionality or an entirely new workflow, you just do it. You say, boop, insert here, and it just does it, mm. right? Or you could say, I'm going to subscribe now to this SNS topic. So instead of like three different services or three, you know, three different functions going to listen to this SNS topic and execute code based on the data that comes in, I can add a fourth. I can drop one out. I can do whatever I want. The other things don't know. The other things don't care. And like Tim was saying, it makes for a really clean working environment in the long run uh, to make sure that things are truly isolated, truly separate, and you're really thinking about resiliency as well as failure paths, as well as the happy path there. Um, so it's just a different way of thinking. And I get it. I mean, we use CloudFormation for some of our stuff, um, but not for everything. Can you, and a lot of times it's in our dev account, we build in the console, and then we figure out how to make a nice CloudFormation template out of it. And then we put that into production. 